All right, I'm up here in Alaska. I ain't made a video in a little while. Came up with an idea. Uh, something we can talk about that I don't have to have a boat to do. So uh, talking about like reading rivers and the information that you can gather offline using the USGS or the NOAA sites. I think I added extra A in there. But anyway, uh, I actually like both sites. For me, I guess I'd say I like the USGS site a little better um, for reading river data. And we'll talk about uh, cubic feet per second. That's really what I'm reading when I'm looking at it, not the cot, not quite the gauge height. I will look at the gauge height like on rivers that I'm familiar with because I kind of already know what to expect when they're at a certain height or not at a certain height. And uh, so anyway, cubic feet per second is roughly about seven and a half gallons per second that water is flowing by a certain point. Much like this little stream here not a whole lot of gallons going by per second right there's cook inlet pretty amazing place i am going to make a video of my trip up here it's going to be really sporadic stuff that'll be coming here in a week or two before i head home uh first of august but uh anyhow i'm going to try to do some recording my screen on my phone and just show you how i navigate the usgs site and how you can manipulate the data to use in your favor and also you can use google maps Go to Street View, click on a bridge, and you can actually look down at the river. And it's been a while since I've done this, so I don't know how to do it anymore. But you can actually look and see when Google took that photo at the bridge. And then from there, you can go into the USGS site, look up that date, and see what the flow was on that day. And where this is beneficial is for a river that you have never gone to. So, or even seen, drove by, or anything like that. That'll help you kind of get an idea of what that river is going to look like when you get there and also you can use that uh, street view to you know to check and see if it's launchable if there is a ramp or even if uh, depending on where you're at a lot of, a lot of your rivers uh, if you're really motivated you can get in there one way or another you may break a sweat doing it but uh, uh, sometimes it's worth doing all that to explore a place and uh, maybe find you a new fishing hole so anyway, I'm going to stop it here. I'm about to switch over to recording my screen and I'll be talking over that and uh, show you how I look at the data. Okay. I'm going to start with uh, the USGS site. It's the one I prefer. Um, it's not quite as pretty as a website, but it definitely has way more data. So it's just a simple start. Go to Sabine River. I'm just going to use something I'm familiar with for this video near the town that I'm wanting to know. And not every town is going to have a gauge, but I'm going to hit search. First thing that pops up is the USGS site, and I'm going to click on it. And this is just going to give me one individual site. This is the Sabine River near Hawkins, Texas. And here's what we like about the USGS site. It gives you an actual number right there of the cubic feet per second, you know, which we already talked about, seven and a half gallons per second. So basically, 375 cubic feet per second are flowing under that bridge per second, which for this stretch of river is plenty of water. I've ran this stretch of river at 67 cubic feet per second, which is pretty treacherous. But anyhow, you scroll on down, and you actually get a, a gauge height and feet also. And uh, what makes this site even better is uh, you get your means or your averages. You can see that like, typically this time of year. But uh, what makes it great is you can manipulate the data into your favor. Like I was talking about before, getting your Google Photo date. Uh, I could go to begin date and say the photo was taken whenever and select all that. I'm not going to go through it because it takes time and we don't want a long video here. And anyway, you end up having that date. You'll have whatever date you put in through your stretch of days that you did. You can do as many days in that stretch as you want or as little one day to hundreds of days. Um, and you would look right here and see your graphs. And uh, if you want to get all your rivers together on USGS, you have to come up here to graphical, geographical area. And then we're going to go to Texas. And you can play with this too. I like to come down here to the predefined display and I like to hit uh, stream flow and lake table. And lakes may not be important to you, but you know, if usually a lake is feeding your river, you kind of get some more information there. 
And I always do it as major river basin because it keeps everything categorized and the rivers in the order that they flow. And then we'll hit go. And now we'll have a really long list of all the rivers here in Texas. Uh, which is actually a large list, and my phone's been a little slow, but let me get to the Sabine here and uh, show you like where we just was. And once you get used to your river, you know all the – you can just look at that number, and I already know, oh, 375, man, I'm rocking. Let's switch over to the NOAA side now. Um, and this one is a little more – has a little better presentation, but it doesn't have near the data. So this is more or less used for when you're at a familiar river that you know. It's just a much better site to use for that because it just gives you a better graph, flood stage. And it also gives you these cool little – right over here to the left, historic site or historic crests and stuff like that and when they were. Um, <clears throat> but another thing that's nice about the NOAA is you can hit river at a glance there. And then you can type in, I say type, you can select what river gauges along that river did you want to see. And you can hit all. But for me on this one, I just like all of these here. That's the only section of the river that I really pay much attention to. And then you want to hit stage and forecast graph. You don't want all those. You'll have more data on the page and you can handle. So and then you go to make my river page. And I like to take this, I go right here, and you can hit the star button to the star, and it'll save that into a bookmark. So I just hit bookmarks, and see I got River already on there. I'm going to hit Sabine. And then it gives me, all in a row, those rivers. So I can get a really good brief things of all of it. But like I said, I like the USGS better. I'm going to get off here, get back on video, and... Uh, Keep going from there. Okay, if you stayed awake through all that, uh, hopefully there's some good information there for some people who didn't know that. But where I'm wanting to get with all that is uh, when you're traveling to a new river that you've never seen or maybe even never drove over to a bridge, but it's something that you've, uh, you're interested in going to, uh, use your Google Maps, you know, search the river, look for waterfalls and things like that that might be in your way. But uh, use your street view, and use the USGS site, study the data. Anyway, my rule of thumb is, depending on the river, especially if it's a smaller river, which is what I typically like to run, just because it's more challenging. Uh, on a small river, stream, creek, I don't like to go explore something at least at least has 200 cubic feet per second. Uh, any less than that, it's probably not gonna be worth my time. Whereas, like, I did go to the Little River, met Jeff down there in the last video, and it was only like at 100 cubic feet per second, but it was a small creek, so that ended up being plenty. Um, but let me think of another example like Colorado River for example we was just down there it was like over a thousand two thousand cubic feet per second but that's not a lot of water for the Colorado River um, but if you had a thousand cubic feet per second going down the Sabine right there where I run I mean that's boring guys are out there in their prop rows running on plane and ain't got nothing to worry about so that just gives you an idea how to plan a trip useful tools that I use well I hope some of y'all can find some of that information useful uh, I know I do when I'm planning to uh, go to somewhere I've never gone before but uh, anyway I got my mosquito squatter and some mosquito smoke right here I'm gonna try not to get carried off because they are bad this year up here in Alaska but uh, anyway comment below y'all have some questions or anything other than that y'all stay safe